back. Welcome back to Cheeky Bolesque by Cherry Cheeks. What are we doing today? I'm glad you asked. Bolicon is coming up and if you did not know every single class and workshop that you could ever imagine for this weekend is live on the Bolicon website. How do you pick when you have close to a hundred classes and workshops and panels and events throughout the entire weekend? How can you choose? Well, I'm here to help. Bolicon is a marathon, not a race, so I highly, highly recommend you take advantage of breaks, water, food, downtime and really pace yourself as you go. First things first, Bollycon this year for me picking my classes is going to be a little bit different than usual. I am teaching three classes plus another one online at this year's virtual Bollycon Bollypod. First of all you're gonna check out are you attending the physical in-person Bollycon or are you taking the online. Are you at home? Can't go to BollyCon this year? Totally okay. They have a virtual option called the BollyPod. Link will be down below for you to check it out. It is going to be launched at the same time as BollyCon this year and classes are going to be available on demand. You just sign up for them all or you can buy them a la carte and it will be available until I believe December 30th. This year at BollyCon there are so many classes, workshops, panels, caucuses, events, there's a lot going on. Before I even begin, I like to consider what are some things I want to keep in mind. Do I want to focus on anything? Maybe I want to focus on costuming this year. Maybe I want to focus on business and professionalism. Stage presence? Character? Performing? Using the stage? There are so many different things that I could focus on. Sometimes I unintentionally go that direction. I'll pick my classes and then afterwards I'll find out that's just what my weekend is. <laughs> um, sometimes it's at the end of the weekend I realize that. Sometimes it's before I go to Bollycon. Sometimes it is intentional. Do you want to have a theme or do you want to kind of do everything? Take the costuming classes. Take the history classes. Take the burlesque legend classes. Talk to people. Go to the events. Learn about stage presence, learn about eye contact, learn about accessibility and producing. Feel it out. How do you want to do it? Do you kind of want to take it in flow and see how you're feeling? Also, as soon as the classes come out, this is a little bit late. The classes have been out for um, a little bit, a couple weeks now. I highly recommend you go onto the website, check out every single workshop that is available and the events. This year, the Bollycom website is super rad because it has by day by class type. If you want to categorize it by day or by class type or sort it out, then you can. Or if you want to see everything at once, then you can as well. Once I see the classes, the options, um, you will probably notice there's some classes that are like must do's. I have to do this workshop. I have to take this workshop by Cherry Cheeks. Fake it. Talking about how to fake confidence on the days I'm not feeling confident. And sometimes you might see that some of those classes and workshops are happening once. So you have to take it. Sometimes you will find that those classes and workshops are happening twice during the weekend. And so if you miss it once, you can have the second option. Or if there's two classes you really, really want at the same time, then you will know that you have another chance to take one of those classes. So you can kind of like balance it as you go. You'll notice there's a few teachers that you're gonna be teaching two or three classes and workshops. There's gonna be a lot of classes that are similarly based. Maybe there's history, but it's history about like very specific things like Miss Exotic World. But then there's also decolonizing history or fat burlesque history or all of these other history classes. Make sure to check out the details. They all have the descriptions. Take note of the time. Take note of what the location is with Bollycon, the convention center. All of the workshops and classes are in one building, which is the convention center, and then the hotel is a separate building. So make sure you know what rooms you are going to for different classes. I like spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are my love language. I have a spreadsheet that I like to do and I like to print. Going through the class list, I will cross off anything I don't really want to take. Maybe it's something I've taken in the past. There are a few classes I've taken that were mind-blowing and I would definitely take them a second or a third time, especially as a refresher or if it's been a few years. Cross off anything you don't want so it kind of shortens your list a little bit. And then I go from there, again, look at the classes that 
must be done. I have to take them. Uh, this year, I have some classes designated that I cannot take because I'm teaching during those times, and some of those workshops are the only ones of the weekend. If you are not teaching this weekend, or if you have time when you're not teaching, if you are teaching, check out what classes you want, what looks good, and also take note. I might put a stero beside a class that I see is happening twice, so I can keep note of it. Unless I have a must take class, this is the only year I've seen this class. This is the only opportunity I will probably get to have it, even though that's not the case, but it feels like it. I will actually pick two to four classes usually for each time slot. When I look through the schedule, I might notice there's definitely certain times of the day where I didn't see any classes that really resonate for me and that is totally cool. I get to take a rest, I get to just exist, maybe I want to network, maybe I want to go take a nap. That's really good to take advantage of if you notice it. However, if you do have spots with classes um, and say you have two, three, four classes that you really want to take, I like to organize my classes in difficulty. So I'll pick every class that I think would be interesting to take this year and I will weight them of difficulty, easy, medium, hard. For me, I base that off of how much involvement I have to do for the class. So if it's something like a history class or a lecture where all I have to do is sit down, listen to the instructor, take notes, uh, that's an easy class for me. If I have to get up and move, that might be a medium class. If it's something like acrobatics, <laughs> That's probably going to be hard because it's not my skill set. Even if it's something like really emotionally intensive, like eye contact classes, stage presence, healing through burlesque. There's a lot of different classes that do take a lot of emotional capacity as performers or as students taking those classes. So those might be hard for me. And hard is like, I love those classes. I love challenging myself, but I have to be in the right mindset for it. So if there comes a day, because again, Bollycon's a lot of waves, especially in my energy levels, I will try to check in with myself during the weekend. How am I feeling today? I can definitely do a class, but I don't feel very very inspired. I feel pretty tired, but I still want to take a class. Then I know I can take one of those easy classes. Otherwise, if I'm feeling pumped, I'm ready to go, body's in it, mind is in it, then I can gravitate towards one of those more challenging classes. Maybe it depends on the class itself. If I walk into a class and I find it is packed, a really important thing to know about Bollycon is for the most part, you're not going to be signing up in advance for classes. There are a couple of situations I know in past years, they've had master classes and there's also labs where you actually do costuming or actually do makeup or like hands on things with burlesque. Those ones you can sign up for in advance, but most of the movement based classes, stage presence or history or panels, it's all just walk in. You'll find that some classes will get busy and if you're not feeling like being in a class dancing with very tiny bubble around you of where you can move, at least I know I have options and I know what is going on at that same time. And I already know instead of looking through the schedule again, uh, I can just look through my options that I was already interested in to go check out. Pick out a few classes if you can or even if you don't mean to but you do have a few classes that you're interested in totally okay to keep them all on your radar and just again check in as you go. One thing you might notice about the workshop schedule as well is you might notice that certain classes are scheduled at very specific times of the day. The first classes in the morning are often things like yoga, easing into the day, getting into your body. There's also some like really high upbeat dance classes for people who are like go 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 in the beginning of the day and in the evenings Make sure you take time for dinner, eat, feed yourself. Part of scheduling for Bollycon is not just looking at the classes, but it's also looking at how are you going to schedule time to look after yourself. Again, I bring snacks with me everywhere at Bollycon. I make sure to sit down and rest. If you find that you are tired, feel free to take a break. That is a-okay. And also, if you want to just schedule times to go hang with friends, maybe you plan going to the hot tub. Hello, Canadians. There are events. You will find that by the time the last workshop of the day ends and the next event happens, there's I think only an hour, maybe two hours between the two to get ready, to eat food, to rest. Uh, so make sure to really plan your time of how do you want your evenings to look or even like that in-between period as well and also for lunch. Oh my goodness, I almost did not videotape this one important piece about Bollycon. Now I'm recording properly. <laughs> I almost forgot to talk about one of the most important often life-changing, impactful 
events that happen at BaliCon, and that is the caucuses. A BaliCon caucus is so many different things, and it will depend on who's moderating it that year. But essentially, a caucus is an opportunity for performers of similar demographics or ex- life experiences. It is a chance for them to connect, chat, hear each other's stories, maybe talk about. Difficulties in life that you're facing in burlesque in life. Maybe it is a time for you to celebrate each other's wins and really just be heard and connect with your people. They are a phenomenal networking opportunity, even just to exist. You don't have to actively be networking. You can just exist and learn about other performers with similar experiences to you, and they are so 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 important. In past years at BaliCon, some of the most common caucuses that we tend to see are the BIPOC caucus for performers of color, disability babes, parents in burlesque, big body or fat burlesque performers, 40 plus queer performers. Often there are also caucuses that are added to the schedule throughout the weekend as people. Think of ideas. Often, BaliCon has one or two free spots for anyone to kind of just jump in and claim the training room and just do it as a caucus. So, if you go to the BaliCon website, you should see all of the caucuses and panels and everything related to that that are currently scheduled. And even throughout the weekend, you will probably notice that there are a few last-minute additions. Otherwise, that's kind of it. It's pretty basic. Everyone has their own way of scheduling or preparing for scheduling. You'll find when you go to BaliCon again, it's a marathon. Not a race. I encourage you to check in with yourself, check in with your friends, make sure you're taking care of yourself. Definitely, there's opportunity for you to learn a variety of styles from a variety of teachers on the same subjects. But that is super great about burlesque and BaliCon is just you learn about so many new perspectives from different performers from different experience levels. If you have attended BaliCon before, if you are a pro at making schedules, how do you make schedules? What do you have? What are tips that you like to keep in mind every year when you? Go leave your recommendations down below, and otherwise, I look forward to seeing you maybe this weekend if you're at BaliCon or in my next video. Bye.